This video will show you how to set up DPS 900 to use an emulator for drilling or piling. Uh, they're basically the same, but for this example, we'll make a drilling emulator. So I've already got my user here, and now for my machine, I will tap on this box and make a new machine. I'll call it Drill Emulator. So for my mode, that's going to be drilling. And for my machine setup, I'll need to change that to emulator, or Trimble Emulator. Hit accept, select that emulator, and you can tell that you've successfully made it because you'll see a joystick here rather than the actual um, drilling machine or piling machine. So I'll tap on that to enter DPS 900. Okay, so now I'll tap connect to connect my Canon GNSS uh, emulator. I will now be able to see my machine in my site. So if I didn't have a site, this would just be blank, but since I already have a site, uh, you can see my site in the background. And the measure up for your machine is gonna just have some default values. So you can just leave those as they are for emulator purposes. But if you wanna go in and change them, all you'll need to do is go into home, hardware setup, measure up setup. And here you can start making adjustments to the dimensions of your machine. But I'll just leave that as it is for now. The only things we kinda wanna be concerned with is the emulator setup, which is found right here. I'll tap on that, and we can just go over some of these options. Uh, if I'm using auto drive, so if I actually have a corridor on my site, I can enable this, and my machine will just keep moving down that corridor along the the uh, center line, just like uh, the 3D drive view of Business Center. So this will just be the interval that it'll be moving. So it doesn't really matter which one I select for here for just regular emulator purposes, but I'll just leave that as 100 for now. Uh, next, we've got the step distance. This is going to be how far your machine moves each time you, you move it forward or back. And it's going to be easier for you to get closer to holes if you leave this as a small number. Uh, right now, I've got it as two centimeters. That'll be pretty good for emulator. Um, you'll notice you'll move slower around the site. So you may want to increase this number if you're tramming the machine long distances but leaving it as a low number will help you to get right on top of your hole perfectly. Now for dither elevation and dither position, these are just gonna be uh, slightly moving your machine. So I usually set this up as uh, one millimeter so that um, even though my machine's basically sitting still, it's just gonna be kind of dithering its position one millimeter. And for emulator purposes, this helps because you'll constantly be getting that refresh value that you normally would be seeing. And then for these emulator offset limits, these ones aren't so important. Um, you're just going to use these when you do your stationing movement. Uh, you can kind of offset your machine uh, left and right of the station or up and down from the station. But we, we don't really need to touch on this. It's not so critical for doing demos. And lastly, we have drilling meters per second. Uh, this would be the same for piling too. So what it's saying by being 0.5 is when I hit F1, my drill depth bar will automatically be moving down at 0.5 meters per second. So this can be increased or decreased depending on uh, when you're running your demo, how deep the holes are. You want to be able to finish them in a, a timely manner. But at the same time, if, if they're going you know, one or two meters per second, you're going to have a lot harder time of stopping them or hitting F3 right when you hit the design depth of that hole. So everything looks pretty okay here. I'm gonna tap accept. And get me back to my screen, my plan view, and I'll start to move my machine forward. So right off the bat, you can see my machine's moving, but it's not moving as fast as I'd like because I wanna get all the way up into this building pad. So like I mentioned earlier, you can come into hardware setup, emulator, emulator setup, change that step distance to a larger number. Now as I move forward, the machine will move a lot quicker. All right, now that I'm back in here, I'm just gonna turn that value back down to something a little more manageable. So now when I move forward, it's, it's taking much smaller steps.
All right, really quick, just to go over what we can do with the emulator with if you have a numeric keypad, I'm just gonna show this diagram. So this is a diagram of how DPS 900 can use a numeric keypad. I'll just go over these quickly. Uh, we've got your eight and two keys giving you forward and back. Your four and six keys turning you left or right, pivoting on your machine rotation center. Seven will increase pitch. Nine will decrease pitch, uh, one will decrease roll, and three will increase roll. And those are, when I say increase pitch and roll, that's just going to be affecting the inclination of your mast. So if you're doing inclined holes, you're going to need to pitch that mast at whatever the design inclination is. You've also got five and zero, which do the same thing. And that's just going to be resetting your tilt to plumb. So if you've inclined your mast to some inclination and you wanted to set it back to vertical you just hit five or zero and that'll just bring it right back to plumb uh, and then for piling only if you use the asterisk key you'll actually be able to emulate blow counts so after you hit f1 and you start to do a pile you can just keep tapping that asterisk key and that'll emulate a blow for each time you hit that button uh, the last two are the plus and minus keys this would be the minus key with the down arrow and this one with the up arrow is the plus key and these will affect your antenna elevation for your emulator so that will move at 10 times distance of what you have for your step distance so if i have my step distance set at one each time i push that button it's going to go 10 meters or 10 feet up or down okay so now that i'm back in my emulator uh, some of the things to note is since i have a surface I've, it's showing my current tool position down here at minus three. So I can start hitting that plus key on my numeric keypad, start bringing my heading antenna elevation up so that I know that I am above my surface. Let's put that at about 10 meters above my surface. And now I'll go in here and change these to some of the items that I like to have to change the info box all I have to do is tap in the box find the item that I'd like to use and select it so these are all pretty much what I want them to be I'll just change this one to slope distance and slope distance is tied directly to the depth bar so uh, this green bar distance to this black line is uh, this 9.87 that you're seeing here now I will create a simple drill plan Go into the drill plan manager, tap new, do a surface model, which is just going to be a basic grid. These, these top three positions are taking the current tool bit elevation of my, my tool. Uh, this is my current orientation of my machine, so I'll leave that as it is. For hole inclination, I'll leave that as zero. Uh, for this, I'll just make uh, two holes in each direction, spaced at one meter apart in both directions. And then down for end drill holes at plane, I will just leave that unchecked because I do have a surface. And uh, like you saw on the previous screen, I was about 10 meters above that surface. So by default, this will end directly on my surface. So I'll tap accept. So now my drill plan is created. And you can see I'm already over my center hole for my drill pattern. On the left hand side, you can see that hole ID is 0, 0. So now I can easily see which hole I'm currently on. And as I move forward to another hole, since I have it in the automatic hole selection mode, it'll lock onto the nearest hole that I am um, navigating to. And to put in that automatic mode, you just want to have this padlock in the unlock position. If I put it in the lock position, it'll be locked onto that hole no matter which direction I turn. So for now, we'll just put it to the unlocked. And I'll get over a hole. get it to within a green in my bullseye view. And since it's vertical, I've got my red bar in the middle of the green area, and that's on zero. And same thing for the pitch bar. If I was to adjust my values, you can see that, that they change outside, but that zero is where I want to be. And if I had them way off, I can just hit five or zero, and that's just going to put me back at plumb. So when I'm over my hole, I hit F1 to start drilling. You now see it says start point saved, and my depth is moving at about half a meter per second. 
So as I get closer to the bottom of my hole, I'm going to be watching this a little closer. And right when I get to this block line, I'm going to hit F3 to save. So I hit F3 as close as I can. And you can see it reset the depth bar back up to where it started. Now I can just move to another hole. Get as close as I can to 0, 0 in my bullseye view. Hit F1 to start. So you can see also over here the slope distance is going to be the same as the depth bar. So as that goes down to 0, I can also be tracking this value rather than looking at the depth bar. So I hit F3 when I'm close to the bottom. And then now that these holes are finished, you can see the, uh, the X through them as well as the finished color rings. I can look at the properties of that hole by clicking on them and selecting properties, uh, seeing all the design information as well as the as-built information, some of my delta values. And if I want to export this information, all I need to do is go back into Drill Plan Manager, make sure that the plan that I'm on is currently selected, tap on this Save icon, Find a place I want to export it to, and then tap Accept. And now this file will be exported to my desktop, and that'll include my design drill plan as well as my as-built information. In the event that you want to give a demo, but you don't have a numerical keypad either on your laptop or on uh, an external USB numerical keypad, you can actually just use this icon right here at the bottom that brings up the emulator positioning control. So if we take a look here, we can see that I can go increasing and decreasing my northing and easting. So that's basically going to move me east and west. Uh, if I hit the, the arrow on the outside with the two arrows, that's going to mo be moving me at 10 times my step distance that we set earlier. And if I hit the small arrow, that just moves me uh, my step distance value. Same thing with the elevation. I can increase and decrease my elevation, and that's going to be tied to my my antenna elevation and if we just move the machine there we can see the back and forward works similar to the keypad where I can just move forward and back same thing with rotation I can just rotate my machine left to right if I do have a corridor I can use the drag mode so when I have an alignment I can just drag the stationing left and right and that will move me up and down station along that alignment. And similar to what I was showing earlier in the emulator setup, if you made changes to that offset limit, when you slide these bars for the offset and elevation, one in the drag mode, uh, you'll be moving your machine either up and down or left and right of that alignment. And for station mode, it works kind of similar to drag mode, except it's a little more manual, where you can come in here and enter the station you want to be at and what limit. Uh, lastly, there's this icon on the far left, and this will give you controls over your tool pitch and roll, your body pitch and roll, uh, rotor, which will only really apply to piling, and your boom swing. Uh, but I definitely recommend getting the numerical keypad because that'll be a lot quicker for doing um, demos, as well as the when you do this mode, you have to have your keypad up, and it's a little distracting as well as uh, clunky to be able to move your machine this way compared to using the numerical keypad. Mm -hmm.